Okay. Um, I'm going to go over some of the research that I've been doing over the last 15 years. I'm going to pick out some of the highlights and I think what's relevant to terroir zoning. And then in the second half, I'm going to just describe some of the more recent research that I'm doing. And there's a little bit of an issue of scale in what I'm talking about today. So there's three sort of scales that I work with. There's the precision viticulture scale, and that's going to form the first part of what I'm talking about. And then there's uh, the more climate characterization work that I've been doing, and that's at the macro climate scale. So that's the big scale. Am I a bit, is that better? Okay. Closer? Sorry. And then in the middle scale, uh -huh. so I think it was switched off. And I might step back a little bit now. And then um, uh, there's a middle scale, which I'm call it, going to call terroir scale. So it's somewhere between the precision scale that I've been working at and the macro scale climate analysis that I've been working at. So a quick outline, three areas that I want to talk about. So remote sensing of vineyards, just give you an outline of what I'm, what I'm talking about there. The new technique that I'm using in remote sensing, so it's a relatively new uh, way of thinking about things called object-based image analysis, and that's how I analyze my imagery. And then I've got a couple of examples of image classification, and one of those image classification methods is within the framework of object-based image analysis. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to assume a little bit of uh, remote sensing knowledge from everybody here, but everyone should be able to understand what I'm talking about. It's a little bit blurry up here, but what you can see here is a, a, a close-up version um, zoomed in of an area within a vineyard. And it also shows some of the analytical spatial data that's overlaid onto that. And this is the way I work. So I have uh, a, a, a multispectral uh, remote sensing image. It's a relatively high spatial resolution. I think this one's at about 50 centimeter pixels. And then you produce a vegetation index. This one's called the NDVI. And I'm going to talk about vegetation indices a little bit later. The NDVI is quite good. It's good at distinguishing between where you have uh, pixels that are vine and pixels that are non-vine. And so it is useful for picking out exactly where your vines are. And you can also see within this diagram that I've got little green circles. In fact, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more because it is a little bit blurry. So these uh, little green circles, they represent uh, vine trunks. So every single vine trunk, because vineyards often are in Australia and here, around here, they're very um, set out so that we have a clear, there's a regular vine spacing and there's a regular row spacing. And they are very accurately done. So um, you can make a quick algorithm on the computer. You tell it, give it the boundary of your vineyard. You tell it the row direction. You tell it the, uh, the distance between the vines, the distance between the rows, and it will populate that vineyard with exactly where all of the vines are in that vineyard. And it works remarkably well. You, you think it might not, but it does. And then using the, all of those points, you put those points into the, into the GIS, you do a little, um, there's a thing called Sison polygons, and it separates out these points um, into areas. So there's an equal distance between each one of the points. And those are the little gray boxes that you can see in there. So each one of those boxes is what we call an object in remote sensing now. So that object contains a number of pixels and using the information that you have on reflectance from the imagery in those pixels for that object, you can produce some summary statistics that describe that particular vine. So for every single vine in the vineyard, the computer works away. It doesn't actually take that long. Uh, as a little algorithm I use and it just gives us um, a database of every single vine in the vineyard. So this is the way that we can use the base image information to come up with real quantitative values that we can use then to predict fruit quality and yield parameters uh, in the vineyard. And this is something that I did quite a long time ago now. Just uh, the first uh, image segmentation um, that I did back in 2002. So using that a similar kind of algorithm, I've, I've gone through several iterations of using that algorithm and this is why, uh, one uh, that I used a long time ago. Basically it does the same thing. So it gives us our vines, each individual vine, 
And in this case, I just separated them out based on their size. So the big ones are the, are the green ones, and the, ha and, the, and the small ones are the red ones in this, in this diagram here in the map. We went out and we sampled. We got 30 samples from each one of those um, areas, and we found that there was a significant difference in the anthocyanin content of the berries. So much higher where there was lower canopy, smaller canopy, uh, was the anthocyanin content, and the anthocyanin content was much... So it was higher where this canopy was small, and it was lower where the canopy was large. So there was a, a significant difference between uh, the anthocyanin content. So there was a clear difference in quality for this particular vineyard. So this worked in this particular vineyard case, and we did this study over two years at this one site, and everything was consistent, it worked quite well. And some of the things that we found in this particular vineyard was that um, the correlations could change over time depending upon when you took your imagery. This diagram shows us the uh, strength of the correlation with different um, uh, fruits and yield variables. Um, and I've got canopy density, which is basically the mean NDVI from those objects that we characterized uh, in that first image. And sometimes we saw that you had a negative correlation early in the season with canopy and then you had a positive correlation uh, later in, in the season. If it's in that little dashed line there, if the point fell in there, then there wasn't a significant correlation. So they tended to be in this particular vineyard. If you took an image early, it was strongly correlated and it might have been negative and it was strongly correlated later in the season with canopy and it was positively correlated. So there's this switch in correlation as we move through the season. So this basically tells us, depending upon what time of the year you are doing your imaging of your vineyard, in this particular case, it affected the strength and the direction of the correlation with the, uh, with the fruit. So we're all talking about relative uh, relationships here. So we, we can't predict absolute values, we're just talking about the spatial differences. This diagram, so I also worked out canopy area, that was the threshold, the count of the number of pixels in that object that were above the threshold NDVI. And we had s different uh, correlations. You can see some of them are, are quite similar, so the pattern of correlations over time are uh, a little bit similar, but it was different. So depending upon how you characterized um, and it, what statistics you used for your objects, it did affect the strength of the correlations again. So the way you go about producing these statistics, what time you take them, in this just this one vineyard, it did affect the strength of those correlations. So we do have to take care uh, when we do remote sensing of vineyards because things change within a season. In this particular case, um, we think the cause of that change, that reversal in the correlation, was due to uh, the characteristics of the soil that the vine was growing in. The, vine, the vineyard was about 20 years old. The vines that were growing in the deeper soil, a little bit lower elevation where it was a little bit more moist, they were much larger. The vine trunk size was much bigger. Um, and they had a slower start to the season, so the canopy developed a little bit more slowly, but they had more water availability and they produced larger canopies by the end of the season. So you can see at the start of the season, so we're just looking at the second or the third vine as we're going left to right, you can see for the ones that are in the, the, the warmer, uh, shallower soil, they, uh, their canopy grew earlier and came, uh, was, so it's larger than the, ones, the, the larger vines at that time of the year, but by the end of the season, um, the ones that were in the shallower soil were smaller than the ones that were in the deeper soil. So that's, that was the cause of the change in the correlation in this particular vineyard. So I was lucky enough to get funding and we were able to do a, um, another study. Um, this time we had two vineyards and we were able to do it for three years. So overall we've got three vineyards and we've been able to do it for a total of eight years if you take into account all of the times that we've done it. We did some imaging again various times across the season and we just wanted to have a look at what the differences were between different styles of vineyard and whether that had an effect on the strength of the correlations that we got between what, on how we were able to make predictions about fruit quality and yield uh, based on the canopy characteristics. So this is quite a large vineyard, it's, uh, so it's 12.2 hectares, a single management block uh, in Griffith. It's Shiraz, uh, and there are 19,824 vines in this vineyard, so we, using this algorithm we are able to produce a database for every single vine in that vineyard very quickly. 
Uh, when we did this, we thought we had an error because you can see that there is this striping effect within the, within the vineyard, and that's a common problem you get in these uh, vineyards when you're using remote sensing because there's an aliasing effect um, that artificially uh, uh, changes the pixels. And we thought we made a mistake with the uh, georectification uh, process. But in fact, there were snakes in the irrigation system that were blocking the water uh, from going, dead snakes in the irrigation system. And that's what caused those things. So we've, after doing the georectification three times, we went out to the vineyard and we found these snakes. And we actually made a large improvement into, in, with the vineyard because we improved the irrigation system. There are other things in this vineyard. There were other things in this vineyard that caused problems as well. There was a different um, pruning system had been used in that lower half of the vineyard, so they uh, expressed more vigour uh, in that lower half. And you can see on the western side, uh, closer to the, where the irrigation pump was, they got a little bit more water as well. But just by doing this, we were able to, sh we were able to make great improvements in that vineyard and we were able to even out uh, the productivity. So here's, here's some more diagrams that show the uh, relationships between some of the yield components and um, uh, fruit quality components that we uh, sampled from that vineyard. If it's between those two lines, then it wasn't significant. So you can see for the total soluble solids of the fruit that was collected, there was very few uh, um, uh, significant relationships. But for yield, there was quite a good one, and berry, berry weight was the key component of the yield uh, that showed good relationships. And phenolics, again, and color, of course, they're very closely correlated, but again, they were negatively correlated with um, the, um, the, the, the canopy characteristics we were deriving from the remotely sensed data. I've also changed in these diagrams. You can see when I looked at that, when we looked at the first change over time, we were just using days since bud break. Now I use cumulative growing degree days. It's a, a measure of the phenological development of the vine, and I think that makes it more easy to compare across years and seasons. Here's our other vineyards. This one was in the Hunter Valley. Uh, the previous vineyard, it was hedge pruned, machine pruned, so it had quite large uh, canopy. This one was uh, VSP, so it had much smaller canopy. It was very well managed, so hands-on, hand-picked, um, looked much neater. It's in the Hunter Valley. So tourists will come by, so it has to look neat. Um, and in this one, there was still quite a large variation that we were able to pick up from the remote sensing device. The relative differences you can pick up from the remote sensing device um, can be quite accurate, so we can still show these differences, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there are big differences within the vineyard. And when you look at this one, compared to the one we had in Griffith, the canopy looked very similar all across the vineyard, but the remote sensing can still pick out the differences. In this particular case, we didn't find very good correlations with uh, many of our fruit and uh, quality uh, variables that we sampled from the vineyard, so it was quite a different situation. You can see that they're quite close to the line or they're uh, within those two lines, and that means that there weren't very many uh, strong correlations. And that's just simply because uh, the canopy was so small, it was so uh, similar right across the vineyard. So it does depend upon, so basically what I'm trying to say is it does depend upon um, the characteristics of your vineyard as to whether this remote sensing technique will work or not. So some cases it will, some cases it won't. You need to think about uh, the type of canopy that you're looking at as to whether it will work or not. So um, in those diagrams, you might have noticed some little acronyms and things, and I've been talking about the normalized difference vegetation index, but I don't actually use the normalized difference vegetation index anymore. Normalized difference vegetation index, when everyone puts it in their paper, they cite this paper. It's Rouse et al, 1974. If anyone's done any remote sensing, they would have cited that when they write the NDVI equation. But I bet no one ever reads it, because uh, this paper um, was, was produced in 1974. It was a long time ago. They were using eight meter pixels and this paper was particularly looking at uh, rangelands, grass, a uh, very low level of biomass. The NDVI is great for that and it works really well in this paper, but when you've got very high spatial resolution uh, pixels um, in a vineyard, um, you have very high levels of biomass. And the NDVI is not very good at all at distinguishing between levels of biomass when you've got a high level of biomass to start off with. So I don't use the NDVI 
I. Oh, here's a here's the thing that shows the number of leaf layers. So leaf area index versus NDVI. You can see as you go from zero to one, there's a good differentiation between NDVI. So this is number of leaf layers, but you know. Obviously, in a grapevine canopy, there's two, three, four layers of vegetation, and you can see the NDVI doesn't increase very much as you increase the number of leaf air, uh, leaf layers. So I've looked at some other um, ways of characterizing the vegetation. The EVI, the Enhanced Vegetation Index, and the Triangular Vegetation Index, from my literature review, I identified those using similar bands of the spectrum, some from a cheap multispectral system. You can produce those um, indices, and they are better for where you have high uh, levels of um, biomass. So I did some analyses. All of these correlations, basically the higher the number here, the better the um, uh, index. The ones that worked out the best was the triangular vegetation index, just using the, the pixels that had the higher values. So the 50% higher values within the objects that I defined, the triangular vegetation index is the one to use. So if you are going to do some remote sensing, just look up triangular vegetation index. That's the one that you should be using, not the NDVI, and certainly not the simple ratio. Okay, so I've got a little bit of time. I can talk about image classification. So bring this back to uh, terroir. So I'm going to go through two here. I've got ISO cluster classification to start off with. This is the traditional method that you might use to classify uh, your remotely sensed images. And then I'm going to talk about it in an object-based image analysis framework, which is a new way of doing things. So here's a soil electri electrical conductivity using an EM38 survey. So there's a little bit of variability. Remember the image that I showed you before? You can see there's a little bit of a, uh, a correlation there with what we saw in terms of the canopy. This is the elevation, so there was a uh, about a 20 meter variation in elevation from the top of this vineyard uh, to the lower bit, and there's a little bit of variability within that slope as well. And what we can do, it's not just images that we can apply these techniques to, uh, multispectral images, but we can, any kind of raster spatial data, we can apply these, uh, this technique to. So basically what I'm doing is I'm uh, using both of those uh, equally to define uh, areas within the vineyard based on the elevation and the EM38. Of course you can add in many, many more layers of information. As long as it's a raster data file, so you can, I could add in the NDVI. If I've got actual yield monitoring, I could add that in as well. And we could put all of those into the mix and ask the computer to come up with some uh, zones that we could use for management zones or for sampling or anything like that. This is a little bit complex. Obviously, you might just want two zones or something like that. So I've got nine zones here. You might want to go out and have a look and just see which ones of these zones are similar and just um, group some more together. But that's the idea that you can um, bring in lots of different spatial layers and produce um, uh, classification and zones within your vineyard. So to do this, it's a pretty simple uh, geographic information system process. It's quite straightforward to do if you've got the GIS software. Just to bring back the, uh, the canopy data from the remote sensing, there was, I think we, pretty, we, we did prick out um, the zones quite well just based on that canopy data. So object-based image analysis classification, just finally. Here's, uh, it's not a vineyard obviously, but this is, this is what I've been testing this technique on. We've got different types of vegetation in this uh, vineyard, so it's just a, a very high spatial resolution uh, drone image, blue, green, red bands of the spectrum, so it's just a normal true color image. But because we have this very, very high spatial resolution using a drone, it's one centimeter pixels. So we have things called, we have texture and patterns within the, the various, it's fine spatial variability within the image that we can use to classify the image. So not just using the actual brightness values of the pixels, but we use the pattern and the texture of the local area as well to define the uh, image. So in an object-based image analysis environment, the first thing that, that we do is we uh, find points within the vineyard, or in this case, this little area of scrubland, where there is a similar level of brightness and variance uh, of the pixels surrounding it. So the closer the, the dots are in here, the more spatial variability there is. And you can, there's a, the only parameter you need to uh, supply to this algorithm is, is a scale factor. So if you have a large scale, obviously the points are going to be further apart. If you've got a small scale, they're going to be closer together. 
Then we use another Thyssen polygons kind of technique. So before in a regular vineyard, you've got um, uh, you can use vines, vine trunks. Here uh, in this in this in this method, we just have a more uh, open system, and I imagine doing this at a much larger scale. So I'm not going to be using individual vines anymore. I'm going to be doing it in this sort of technique. So it picks out areas that are quite similar to each other. So there's our objects that we've uh, provided, and I imagine doing this in a vineyard and having a similar kind of diagram after I've taken out the, uh, um, the inter-row spacing. And then of course we can classify those, and obviously we can produce a map. In this case I'm just uh, determining differences between the major types of vegetation, but in a vineyard we can determine the differences uh, in some other characteristics uh, of the vineyard. And so this is what I'm going to be trying to do in the future. And I don't have time to talk about any of that. Um, so hopefully in this seminar um, I've just given you an idea of how I go about doing my remote sensing of vineyards in an object-based image analysis framework. So taking the pixel values and working out metrics based on the pixel values within those little areas. Um, the way I deal with phenology, uh, the, the best vegetation index is to use, don't use the NDVI and how this uh, image classification technique works in an object-based image analysis classification environment. Just got a few acknowledgements. There's a lot of people do help me and have helped me over the years uh, with some of this. I'd, Greg shouldn't actually be on there because I didn't get a chance to get onto the work that we've done and that's led to some new things. Um, so you can take his name off. But everyone else on there has helped me uh, with the stuff that I've presented today. Um, uh, and of course the uh, uh, Grape and Wine Research and Development Corporation, which I think has changed its name or something, uh, did pay for a lot of the research uh, and the flights and things that did go into producing uh, that research. Thank you.